Hello, hi, I'm Karen and I'm May and, and we're from, from Boomers, Boomers to Gen Z. Z. So uh, today we're going to ask a, a little bit poignant question. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know you're really young, but I'm sure there's something that if you were to talk to your more younger self, uh, you know, what would you, what would you tell yourself? Mm, if I could talk to my younger self, I would tell her to stop rushing. Okay. I will tell her to stop stop rushing and stop distracting yourself. I find it so funny when we're younger, right? Like young young girls, we really want to be like grown up women. Yes. We want to wear the lipstick. We like all this like stuff. You know, we like the handbags. We we adore what our moms are doing. You know, we we, we want that. Yeah. But now that I've got the high heels, the high heels, <laughs> oh my god, that we fall down and I get scolding. Um, but what I would tell myself is not to rush, like stop trying to chase and become that so fast. Enjoy and be present in like where you are now because the moment you pass like 21, 30 is not that far away and you're just like, oh no, I just want to go oh, back. Really? Are you serious? I, I, <coughs> Are you the only one or generally most? Generally, yeah, like I think it's quite scary. Like now that we're in our like I I'm a, I'm twenty four now, but I'm scared. Like I I'm actually now going through that. That's I feel scared. Oh, you're I, scared I, for the future. I'm scared for the future because I feel like I rushed through all of these experiences so quickly when I was younger. Okay. So keen on growing up, you know, like feeling like a grown up. We would love it when people say you look so mature oh, or you yeah. look older than your age. Right. We'd love that. Like oh yay. <laughs> That wasn't a compliment. <laughs> like, not, not now. <laughs> yeah, no, not now, especially. So I would tell myself not to rush, right. be present, um, and actually enjoy being a child, a teenager. Enjoy those moments. Enjoy the innocence that you feel. Enjoy the curiosity. And do not rebel in order to start trying to fulfill your curiosities, but instead actually hold your parents really close to you because there's going to come a day where you move out and you're going to miss them so much and you cannot turn back time. So just don't rush. Like Stay where you are because it, it will go by fast anyway, whether you like it or not. So kind of, um, uh, you're saying that to those who are in yeah. their, what, uh, 18, 19, even of like 16, yeah. 50. I see like young girls now, like just like the way they dress, the way they carry themselves. And it's so much like people in their 20s. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, why? Like, wear a Mickey Mouse hoodie. <laughs> and like, wear some sneakers that glow when you walk. <laughs> it's like, that stuff is cool. <laughs> Um, but it's just, it, it scares me because when I think back, and I, ha I have some friends who are, who are younger, mm -hmm. um, and they have younger sisters, then what are these, these girls going to be like when they're 20, when right. they're 30? You're, like, you're going to be the same for that long. We're supposed to enjoy the phases of life. And I feel like I rushed my adolescence, like the, the younger adolescence, my teenage years. Um, and I wish I could just tell myself not to rush. Oh, and, and when you said that you kind of they didn't appreciate your parents. parents. Yeah. Can you elaborate more? So I was so angry with my parents because I so my parents are divorced and then like they started seeing other people. So I was just very angry and I was very self victimizing. So that made me push myself away from my parents. Wow. So every time they would try to reach out to me or show me a sense of love, I would push right. and push and rebel and be like, No, you don't love me anyway. It was very like it was just so negative and I just didn't want to feel that warm embrace. But right now, like that's all I wish I could do, you know. I wish I could just like lie on my mom's lap and like watch TV or I could like be cooking with my dad in the kitchen. And I was so busy being angry with them and wanting to be like that girl I saw on TV mm -hmm. when I was younger that I lost all those moments and now I can't even go back to them. And now they're aging or so my dad's not gonna stand in the kitchen and cook with me. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna be like you cook now, you order grandma. <laughs> so it's like I've I've lost access to those moments that I can't go back to. Well, it is not lost, it's lesson learned. Yeah. But so what advice would you give to because teenagers are generally just angry. They're always yeah. angry with their parents or they they generally don't want to listen to their parents. Yeah. So what can you tell 
parents who are dealing with angry teenagers? What can you tell them so that we can do to quickly change this? So I think that one thing that could be done is that don't don't talk to your teenager in a way where you're talking down at them. Don't talk to them in a way where you do not understand. Um, instead, show a little bit of vulnerability with the teenager. Actually, get down to that level and be like, you know what? I completely understand why you hate me right now. Um, you know, when I was 60 or so, grandma did this to me and I really hated her for it. It was a very frustrating feeling. Okay. And I can understand why you do not want to see my face. But I want to spend time with you. So maybe you can go calm down and maybe we can have dinner together, just me and you. And you can tell me what you're feeling. Okay. So an approach where instead of just listening to advice so much, oh, this is wrong, you should know it's wrong, you can't do this. Give us a moment to actually express what we're feeling in an environment where we feel safe and where we feel like we're not going to get mad. Okay, so let me, let me, because this is important, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, uh, you know, we deal with angry teenagers and there's a lot of frustration, especially with mothers who are busy with work or other things mm -hmm. and then come home and maybe they, uh, on top of that, teenagers sleep hell of a lot. Plus, they eat a lot. <laughs> so, so <laughs> those are the things. And then they get really grumpy because uh, obviously, you know, hormonal changes, mm. uh, raging hormones, uh, you know, adventures, <laughs> sexual adventures as well, all these kind of things. And what you're saying is, don't, uh, no point to shout at them. Yeah, don't show them you're frustrated. Right. Find a neutral place to talk to them mm -hmm. outside of the home. Okay, outside the home. And that we can kind of say, basically just listen to them. Then, yeah, right? just like, so hey, what's what's been up with you lately? Like, you know, like, just like, like what's going on? So like, what what is the thing that annoys you most when you were young? Or with when, you know, when your mom asked you this? So my mom never asked me those questions. So I had a phase as well, I think, that I slept a lot. And the reason that we sleep a lot is also because like we're up all night. Mm -hmm. We're up all night on our phones and stuff. And obviously it irritates our parents and I, I completely can see why. Because we're sleeping all day, we're eating, and then like we just want to bum around. We're not doing anything productive. And then we're annoying our parents who are trying to be productive. <laughs> so but my mom used to just nag at me, oh like May, like you've got to stop doing this, May, how can you still be like that? May so dirty, you may clean your room, may why are you still sleeping? Like right. you know? Okay. It's like why, why, why? Okay. But it's like it's not a question where you want an answer. Okay. It's a statement, right? It's not like when you say like, why are you still sleeping? I'm gonna come out and be like, oh because mom, I'm not gonna do that. Right. I'm gonna be like, oh you just don't get it. Right. Because of the way you asked that question. It was like so a how, how would you tell a mother how how to how to express this? Because this is Universal. Everyone yeah. of us who are parents, uh, when the children gets into that, that teenage years, mm. that, that is definitely going to happen. And so it helped me understand. So that. obviously it's frustrating, but I think that like, I guess it's like on the parent side of things, to kind of like learn how to calm yourself down a little bit more. Okay. Approach the teenager and instead of saying, hey, why are you sleeping all the time? Like, you know what time is it already? It's already lunch hour, get up. Instead of that whole Scenario. sentence that yeah. we've heard probably like every day. Okay. Um, knock on the door and just be like, hey, you've been sleeping a lot lately. Like, let's go out for a drive later. Let's go get some Starbucks. Uh, I just want to chill with you and see what's up. And like in that moment where you're out of the house and you've got them to shower and get up and you know, okay. <laughs> look presentable, be like, are you having trouble sleeping at night? Like, what's going on? Like, is something hurting you? Did something happen? Mm -hmm. Like, what's making you sleep so much? Like, wow. actually ask the question. We know it's wrong. Like, of course we wish we could say, you know, be productive and stuff. Right. But there's definitely something going on. It could be like a, a you know, a fallout with a friend something changed in the body, maybe they, they gained a little bit of weight, or maybe they lost a little bit of weight, maybe they're getting teased in school, okay. maybe the girl they had a crush on, or boy they had a crush on now, like someone right. else, right. and then they come home and then you're always mad at them, so they don't have anyone to talk to. I get you, I get you. So, okay, and and I guess, in fact now it just triggered my memory, is that we as the, the, the mom should also Thing. Stop judging them. Stop mm -hmm. judging them. We, yeah. We've got to 
really think about when we were 16 year olds and when yeah. we were 17 year old put yourself in that space when we listen to them mm. because like if if your child were to come to you and say yeah i'm feeling terrible because uh the girl that i like decided to go with another person to the mm. prom or something like that to you it may not be important but to him it's really important yeah so don't minimize his worries or his concern and that's where as a mother you've got to pivot and be that friend for a while for them and not be the practical mother yeah and just be a friend for that little while and say oh i feel for you i'm so sorry you know maybe there's other things or i need another person that actually you could go with you know that kind of thing and and to be honest i think um, a lot of times this is what i have experienced is they don't even want a solution they just want someone to listen to them and and empathize with the situation so parents uh, whether it's their moms and dads who are listening today you know, it's it's not about solving the problem for them, but uh, don't poo poo their concern. Don't poo poo <laughs> their their their. You know, sometimes it it is they're growing up and they're trying to verbalize something to you, mm-hmm. and that's important. That's the start of something. So don't don't destroy that communication before it even starts. So when when they when like if you were to tell me, then I would have to open up and say, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I didn't know you are going through such a, a bad phase. Mm. Uh, so how, what is this person like? Why do you like her? You yeah, know, exactly. you know, just kind of open-ended question to keep that conversation going. And I think that you'll be surprised that you might find suddenly, oh, you have a little secret between you two, which, yeah. which is nice to know, right? Because I know it, like parents don't really believe this, but actually most of the time, the things that we tell our friends, we wish we could just tell it to our parents. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I wish I wish I could have told a lot more to my mom because I know the secret is safe. Ah. Uh, you see, there can be disputes with friends and stuff, and like we don't know who to trust, and then sometimes we trust the wrong person because we just really need an outlet. Mm-hmm. Whereas if we could just be able to really say what we want to say bluntly at home and also when we speak to our parents it makes us think a little bit more right. because obviously it, it makes us think about our actions or the choices that we're making because we're saying it to our mom or our dad right. so in that conversation we're actually checking ourselves being like actually you know what mom it doesn't matter i think i think yeah i think i'm gonna be fine right you know we'll have those like moments yeah like, because we just verbalize it yeah and then you in your verbalization, you finally found a solution. You yeah. realize, oh, it's not that important. Oh, there's a, a way out of this. Am yeah, because that? That, that relationship with your parents is so warm, right? It's such a warm feeling. So, yeah, I mean, that generally, I would say again, it's general, general. but it, it, you have that trust and you know that you are protected, your secret is safe, yeah. right? But I have this question, right? That you should be, again, uh, should teenagers they or even children really they 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 are quite hard to their parents and always is one parent to the other Mm. so one parent will get a much uh more more retaliation uh difficulty and things like that um why is that why why because of the other parents approach oh so like it's it's always the other parents approach. So like with my mom and my dad, like I would tell them different things because mm-hmm. I knew mom was better with these subjects, dad was better with those subjects. Okay. But I would react to my dad differently from my mom because my dad would listen and he had like a friendlier approach to it. Whereas with my mom, I constantly felt like she was judging me. Oh. Okay. So I would always do that, but. As I got older now, I'm closer to my mom. <laughs> As I got older now, I'm closer to my mom. So I had this when, when my girls were teenagers, um, where we were longer hits, with, you know, especially one child. Uh, you know, everything I did was wrong, and, and I could never do the right thing by her. And, 
And one of the things that when we had one time where it was a, a bit of a, a match, a shouting match, and I said, why? Why do you keep doing this? Every time, you know, when, when dad says it's okay, but when I say it's not not right. And one of the funniest things, it, it's, like a, it's like a compliment and an insult all rolled <laughs> into one. And, and she said, because I know you, you will love me regardless because you're my mom. And I know that I can just do it because I know you'll still love me. <laughs> so, yeah, so there, there's probably that too, right? The one that you know that you can get away with murder with. Yeah, so you, you, so I want to share this to all moms and dads out there. Sometimes you will have that situation and and they will, they will fight you purely because maybe it's frustration that they can't, they can't fight with their friend. They can't, so they, they take it out on us, but actually it's kind of meaningless because it's, they know that no matter what, we are there for them. So they, they, they will just, just yeah, they, just, <laughs> so they will just shout and there will be that, that match, but they know that it's um, uh, unconditional love. So maybe that's something to also consider, right? Yes, but, but yeah, I think so too. And I, I, I can think of those moments where, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I never saw it like that, so thank you. Right? So yeah. have you, have yeah, you yeah, shot I think mom so. sometimes? Yeah. Because I know no matter what or how bad it gets with my mom, she'll always come back. Yeah. Like, where's my dad? Like, what if he just stops talking? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. My mom, like, she'll still, she still needs to nag me tomorrow because she needs to. <laughs> she cannot sleep. <laughs> So, so, so parents out there, uh, don't be disheartened. Sometimes it's true where they, where they just scream and shout at you for no apparent reason. But okay, let's be fair. We do that to them, especially when they're menopause, where we, the, the roles maybe change a little bit and I'll be like, ah, and because we know that they will understand and they are family and they will love us anyway. So that's part and parcel of our uh, unconditional love. Yeah. Yeah, I hope this topic has been interesting and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.